Our broken health care is about more than Democrats or Republicans. It's about a corrupt political system. Medical costs are the number one cause of bankruptcy in the US. 137 million Americans struggled to pay medical costs last year alone. You could pay five times more for treatment if you end up in an out-of-network hospital. Have a deadly allergy? EpiPen's more than doubled in price in just three years. A Nobel Prize winner had to auction off his medal for almost $800,000 to pay his bills. Altogether, we went $88 billion in debt to pay for our care. $88 billion in one year. If you had $1 billion in hundreds, it would look like this. Here's 88 billion. And look at how much each of us spends, more than any other developed country in the world. Think we get better care because we spend more? We don't. If you compare 100 Americans to 100 people from your average developed country, the Americans would lose 31% more years off of their life due to sickness and disability. That means America's inability to address the healthcare crisis is literally taking years off our lives, off your life. It's time to face it. Our healthcare system is killing us, and our broken political system makes healthcare nearly impossible to fix. It's why the Affordable Care Act hasn't delivered everything it promised. It's why the Congress cut more than a third of preventative care funding, and it's why America's opioid crisis got out of control. In the mid-1990s, under massive pressure from the pharmaceutical industry, government officials approved OxyContin and other opioids and allowed them to be advertised as relief from just about everything. By 2007, pharma execs had been hit with a federal fine for their misleading marketing. At one time, in 2008, a single West Virginia town had 5,624 pills for every man, woman and child. The FDA even approved OxyContin for use in children as young as 11. In 2016, Congress made it virtually impossible for the DEA to stop shipments of opioids, even in cases where they suspected hundreds of millions of illicit pills hitting the streets. Big Pharma made $31 billion off OxyContin alone, and the opioid crisis has claimed more lives than the US military lost in the Vietnam War. Mine was nearly one of them. I was addicted to OxyContin. It took me out in about six months. As someone who knows how strong that drug is, as someone who was instructed to take a tenth of a pill the very first time I tried it, the fact that they're prescribing to 11-year-olds is completely shocking and reprehensible. Un unbelievable, I can't even believe that's the truth. If any of this has affected you personally, I'm so sorry. Our government could have done more. They should have. They're supposed to work for we the people. But our government has been bought and sold. Big Pharma makes billions. They use millions of it to hire lobbyists who propose new laws to politicians and deliver massive political donations on behalf of their client. Then the politicians pass the laws that help Big Pharma secure even bigger profits and the cycle continues. Look how much the healthcare industry spent lobbying over the last two decades. It's up to half a billion dollars a year. That's more than any other industry and it's no wonder. This study says that for US companies, quote, exploiting loopholes or lobbying politicians is more profitable than improving efficiency or quality, end quote. That 2016 law about opioid shipments, Big Pharma contributed at least $1.5 million to the 23 lawmakers who co-sponsored the effort. In 2017, some 300 former Congress members and staff were healthcare industry lobbyists, selling their political connections in exchange for laws that affect your health. Why do politicians take part in this cycle? They don't have a choice. Campaigns are expensive and laws are complicated so lawmakers become dependent on this corrupt and broken system. I know this seems hopeless, so I found someone who could give us hope. This is Jen. Hi, Sia. Hi, Jen. Right now, our representatives are incentivized not to fix rising drug costs, poor care, fraud, or overprescribed painkillers. They're incentivized to do what's best for their donors. If we change the incentives, we can change the outcomes. For that, we need a new law. First, we make bribery illegal. That means no more pharmaceutical lobbyists funneling millions to politicians. 
second, we slam shut the revolving door that allows congressional employees and former politicians to go straight to work for a lobbying firm. Third, we end secret money, the practice of hiding from the public who's donating to who. After that, there's a whole slate of powerful reforms that force politicians to listen to us. Now, I know what you're thinking. We can't trust politicians to pass laws that regulate themselves. And you're absolutely right. So we're going to go around them. Sia is going to tell you how that works. Throughout American history, passing state laws has been the secret to success for national change. Issues like women's suffrage, interracial marriage, and marriage equality all started in the states. This isn't about any of those issues specifically, but it's about the political strategy they used to win. So we're following in their footsteps, passing anti-corruption laws in cities and states around the country. Millions of people from across the political spectrum are already involved, and we're already winning. We've racked up more than 100 victories across America. So I'm asking you to be part of the next victory. Go to www.represent.us and we'll get you connected to one of the campaigns happening right now across the country and in your state. You can volunteer to knock on doors, phone bank, organize in your city, or you can join the Commonwealth, a community of people giving whatever they can every month to support local anti-corruption campaigns. Every single dollar goes to the front lines of the fight, not to overhead or organizational expenses. If you do nothing, nothing is going to change. But if each of us does just a little, we're unstoppable. Did all the things that you said that I wouldn't I told you that I would never be forgotten 